In this quick video, we'll look at how you can turn white into any color. You can start with an image like this and turn it into this. Now you may be wondering why this video is specifically about changing white into another color. Well, the reason is that white or any level of gray doesn't have a hue in it. And as a result, some of the tools that let us easily change colors don't actually have an effect on white or levels of gray. For example, I can add an HSL adjustment to this image. So I'll go to adjustments. I'll add HSL. And I can target the green areas, so I can click green, and I can give them a different value. Some of these greens are actually more of a yellow, so I'll select yellow, and I can change those as well. But the same trick doesn't work with whites or grays, because there's no hue there originally. So let me close this. The first thing we want to do is select our white area. So I'll use the selection brush here, and I'll select the white area here, the dress. It doesn't have to be perfect, because we can change it later. I'll get a basic selection here. And then I'll click Refine, which will help automatically clean it up a bit. I think this is good enough for now. So I'll select the output to a mask. And I'll click Apply. So we've masked out the white there. Now there are a couple ways we can use this mask to isolate a color to the white area. Let me show you two ways. The first way is creating a fill layer. So I'll go to Layer, New Fill Layer. And I'll just give it some temporary color. Let's say red. Now I can drag my mask onto the fill layer. And I'll make sure to turn on my mask. And on the fill layer, I can change the blend mode. So you can experiment with different ones, but multiply is one to try. And also linear burn is a good one. I'll keep it linear burn for now. And typically when you do this, you're going to see some problems with your mask. Like I can see an issue here between the arms and the body. So I'll select the mask. I'll select the paintbrush. And you can just clean up parts you don't like. There'll probably be parts on the edges that you could clean up a little bit. You could add parts back in. So of course, the more time you take on this part, the better the result will be. Now with the fill layer selected, you can also change the opacity to change how strong the effect is. So I can dial it up and down. You can also change the color of the fill layer. So with your fill layer selected, you can change the color here and adjust it how you like. Certain values are gonna look better than others. And sometimes you're gonna wanna play with the saturation and brightness to get a more realistic look. So that's a basic method of using a fill layer with a blend mode. Now this method works, but it can look a little bit flat. Let's try a second method using a gradient map. So a gradient map is an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna click my adjustment layers here. And I'm going to add a gradient map. Now by default, a gradient map doesn't look that great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change all these color points to a color I want the dress to be. Let's make some type of pink again. I'll make this one pink. And I'll make this last one pink. It's close enough there, it's a little bit different. Now I'm gonna duplicate the mask I already made for my fill layer. So I'll just control C, control V that, and I'll drag it up to my gradient map. With the gradient map selected, I'll change the blend mode. Let's try linear burn again. Now, so far, this is exactly the same as what we just did. But if we open our gradient map, the cool thing about the gradient map is we can put slightly different colors in the lights and shadows. So the left side of our gradient map is gonna fill in the darks. Let me change that value. I'm just gonna change it to something extreme so you can see what's happening. Now there aren't a lot of darks there. Let me change the middle tone. So now the midtones are blue. And this color on the right is going to be the highlights. So let's change that. Now I'll make it more of a sky blue. So now zooming in, you can see the colors look slightly different in the darks and the bright areas. Let me go back to the gradient map again. Maybe I want this highlight to be even brighter. So you can see as I move it around, you can see the highlights here changing. Let me bring it more towards the white side. That looks kind of cool there, I think. So now we have coloring with some more variety to it. Now we still may want to adjust the brightness and saturation. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm put the gradient map in its own group. And then I'll add an HSL adjustment above the gradient map. So I'll select the adjustment and I'll say HSL. I'll drag the mask up here so it's affecting both of them. And now with the HSL adjustment, I can desaturate it a little bit if I want. I can play with the light and darks to make it look a little more realistic. And I think on this mask, the thing I want to really clean up is the neckline here. Let's clean up the shoulders. And you can always keep cleaning it up till it fits your image better. You can also try modifying the curves and see if that helps. So I'll add in a curves adjustment. Curves. Maybe I'll make the brights brighter. Darks darker. Add a little bit of contrast. And there we go. So here we have before, after. Before, after. If you're not comfortable with gradient maps, check out my video on that subject. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.